Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner, Classic Slash non classics episode number 366, and Devil Shot number 390, 292, okay? First up, it's Batman Battle for the Cow, <clears throat> containing the three-issue miniseries Battle for the Cow, and the two one-shots, uh, Gotham Gazette, Batman Dead, Gotham Gazette, Batman Alive, yes, the Battle for the Cow issues are written and drawn by the awesome Tony S. Daniel, while the um, the Gothic Gazette one shots are done by are written by Fabian and Seeds with artwork by Dustin Nugent, Gillian March, Chris Cross, Jamie McKeith, Alex Nanat, and Mark Kina. Simply put, this particular mini event uh, pretty much is the setup for uh, the bat books for 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 the for 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 basically from 2009 to 2011 basically it sets up a new status quo and prior to this most of the bat books at this particular point in time with the exception of uh, Batman confidential and Batman and Superman Batman uh, were either ended or, in the case of Detective Comics and Batman, for this three-month event, those two books were put on hold for three months. Simply put, Batman is dead. They need a new Batman, so they pretty much—it's not exactly like a fight between like the former psychics of pretty much who who pretty much fights for the cow. About halfway through the story, Jason Todd shows up wearing a bat costume, though he actually uses since he uses guns and he has a metal thing over his face, and. Also, uh, this new Black Mask shows up in here. It's actually Jeremiah, Dr. Jeremiah Arkham. Um, you can thank Tony Asano for making him the new Black Mask. Um, this particular miniseries, it's implied that it's actually still canon. It, there's no definitive proof of that. Uh, if this miniseries is, is actually canon with the current continuity. It's canon with the previous continuity. Yep. Um... Now, what this is book set up, it sets up pretty much, well, Tony S. Daniels' run in Batman, which continues up until the relaunch in 2011, though he doesn't, he does write and draw, basically, for the first year, and then later on he just switches from either being the writer or the artist of the book. Depends his preference. Uh, the Tip to Comics is taken over by, by Batwoman for, for pretty much ten issues before Dick Grayson, who becomes new Batman with thanks to this miniseries, um... Uh, he takes over from issue... Well, basically, Batwoman takes over with issue uh, 853, leaves in 852. Uh, Dick takes over in 860... Uh, he actually takes over 861. Excuse me. As sort of a part of... With a, a three-part note as a cutter. Yeah, with uh, Renee Montoya with, as a backup feature. And plus, also, there's several new titles... Um, the, the Batgirl is, the Batgirl title, and Azrael was revived. Uh, Birds of Prey is relaunched, uh, with Gail Simone back in the book. Though she only stays in the book for the first 12 issues before we hand off somebody else before it gets relaunched, thanks to New 52. Uh, a few original titles. Uh, Robin was relaunched as Red Robin. The Nightwing title ended prior to this. Um, Super Batman and Batman Confidential were completely immune from this. Um, what else? Uh, the, there was a new title, Batman Streets of Gotham. That's one of them. Along with, uh, set, it also set up some stuff in the pages of The Outsiders. Yeah, simply put, this kind of leads into, um, the first arc of The Outsiders. Pretty much the aftermath of this leads into the first arc of The Outsiders. I think The Outsiders are actually in this. There, there is a little bit, but mainly it's, uh, Dick Grayson teaming up with the Birds of Prey, Wildcat, Catwoman, uh, Knight and Squire, uh, and despite the fact that Misfit is clearly seen here on the cover, she is nowhere in the book. Yeah, this here, this is Misfit. Yeah, she's one of the people who claim me Batgirl. Uh, I don't know who this woman is. Um, it can't be Katana because that is Katana. Yeah, that is Katana right there. Sorry for the glare. Yeah, the woman wearing the red and gold over here, that is Katana. Um, this is Owlman, uh, Geoforce, uh, Geoforce is, like, right up here, um, let's see, that is Looker, right there, 
I think actually I think that might be somebody else. Uh, obviously, people can easily recognize uh, Metamorpho and Black Lightning. Yeah, they're on the cover, on the back cover. This is the back cover. Uh, Black Canary, she's an obvious one. Um, Huntress, uh, Wildcat. On the front cover, we have uh, Damien. Let's see. Batwoman. There's Catwoman. Huntress. And Wildcat. A lot of these characters do take part in this miniseries. Uh, but not a lot of them play a big role. The only ones who play a big role in this miniseries are Dick Grayson, Damien, uh, Squire plays a part in it. Of course, Jason Todd and Tim Drake. Of course, Tim Drake becomes Red Robin after this. Catwoman goes off to her own... Uh, team book with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn in the pages of Gotham City Sirens. The Azero title, which, which had ended in 2003, was revived in 2009 with new Azero, a.k.a. Michael Lane, which his miniseries was actually part of this little mini-event, um, which later led to an 18-issue ongoing series that was can't... that the reason why it ended up 18 issues is because of low sales. And also, uh, when they put into trade... The first there was a first volume release collecting the first six issues and the miniseries, uh, Death's Dark Knight. Uh, after that, that that that's where that's where that's where it got to start. Um, issues seventeen and thirteen were never they, they were going to be put into trade, but the trade like several trades in twenty eleven were canceled due to low pre order sales. Uh, issues fourteen the the eighteen were put into a trade no a crossover trade. Deserve as a prelude for a mini event known as Judgment on Gotham, an event that took like a little over a month to do. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Batwoman, as far as I know, oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, Damien took over as Robin right after this event ended, though he did receive some training in the pages of Batman, and there was a new title, Batman and Robin. That title basically continued up until 2014. Despite being relaunched in 2011, it was started by Grant Morrison. So you can see some seeds of the Grant Morrison stuff in here, uh, set up for that series. But, um, yeah. And what else? Uh, I'm trying to think, though. Let me show some artwork from this. Yeah. The artwork in here is really, really good. Yeah. Tony S. Neal does a great job. The guy is a veteran um, Batman artist. He, he, he's a long-time artist, so basically he did a great job with this miniseries. I'm trying to think, though. Uh, there was another series, Streets of Gotham. That was another new series they launched. Uh, that was canceled after 21 issues, not due to low sales, because they want to make room for Flashpoint. That was the only reason why it was ended, along with um, JSA All-Stars. Yeah, that was canceled for the same reason. Um, Batman and Robin, however, uh, the first 25 issues of the first volume have been put to trade, but not the last issue. Nope, the last issue was never put to trade. It was also kind of the same thing with the last issue of Batman's first volume before it hit the, re uh, the final issue of the first volume, issue 713. That was never put to trade at all. Don't know why. Just wasn't. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Batwoman, uh, her last three issues of her feature from the Comics up until recently would not print to trade. Just recently, I think uh, this year, it basically, I think it's coming in summer, uh, that there is the uh, complete um, Greg Rugga and J.H. Williams III, um, Batwoman by, by those two, where it collects the entire 10-part feature. Yes, the entire 10-issue feature. The question backup feature... Which started with issue 853, ended with issue 864, I believe it was. Actually, with 865. Um, yeah, that has put entirely into trade. Streets of Gotham? No, that entire series has not been put into trade, despite what you see in the trades. Um, for some reason, uh, there was a backup feature. There was three backup features. It was Manhunter, um, Ragman, Two-Face... Actually, it was Two-Face, then, then Ragman. Uh, Manhunt took up the first 13 issues. The next few issues were done by um, were done by Two-Face. As a matter of fact, issue 15, which is entirely a Two-Face issue, is not in the trade. Uh, then the last feature was Ragman, and the last few issues basically didn't even have backup feature. 
that series dealt with Hush. And that was a follow to the awesome Gates of Gotham series by, by Scott Snyder. Uh, who later who also did um, Detective Comics for a year. Yeah. But even though this is serious, this is this little event is set up for um, stuff for the next two years from 20, 2009 to 2011, it's still really, really good. Um, I should point out that not the entire event is in this one trade, just the, just the main miniseries and a couple one-shots. Everything else related to the event was actually collected in a companion trade. Oh, excuse me. Um, along with, there was also one issue of Secret Six part of this crossover because, well, Huntress guest starred in the issue and Catman and Bane are basically related to Batman via being, well, enemies of his. So they decided to throw that as an issue. But mainly, aside from the main miniseries, there was a bunch of one-shots dealing with, the, like, there's one from Man Bat, uh, Oracle, uh, there's one called The Network, which essentially is what they call themselves The Network. It was a bunch of one-shots, but it's a good event nonetheless. Uh, it's only it's only like two books, just this, just this main book and the companion book, which collects the one-shots. Highly recommend both. I give this a nine out of ten. Awesome. Next up is Lamborghini's Gotham Academy. Um, this is written by. Let's see if I can find the page here. This is written by. Kathina Kostutin Flores, with artwork for the first uh, four issues done by Rosemary Valor Orcano, and the last couple issues were done by Kelly and Nicole, N Nicole Matthews. Yeah, this is a six issue miniseries that crossed over uh, Gotham Academy with Lambert Janes. Now, in case any of you ask, no, I've never read Lambert Janes. I have a plan. I have a it's on, it's on my list of series to read, but I've never read Lamborghinis. So, if I'm not familiar, if 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 I'm not calling it any characters on the cover that are from the Lamborghini series, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with them. So, the only ones I recognize on the cover, I see Sybil, I see uh, Maps. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, the only people from the Gotham Academy is um, uh, Olive. Maps, Colton, Pam, and Kyle. Um, one of these two, I think it's Olivia, I think it is. Uh, her mother is actually an inmate from Arkham Asylum. Yeah, her mother's actually insane. And as far as I know, uh, they never found her after, after the events of Batman Eternal. Last I heard before Arkham Asylum collapsed, the original Arkham Asylum, and it's since been rebuilt, um, she was still missing. As far as I know, she's never been found. This actually was a really good idea for DC and Boom Studios to do. I should point out, this is actually the first uh, Boom Studios trade I've ever actually reviewed. This, by the fact, yes, I have reviewed uh, Star Trek Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes is, is released through Boom Studios. But that, that trade was released via... The trade in the miniseries released via IDW. Not, um, not Boom Studios. This one is entirely all Boom Studios. DC is just... There is a cross promotion. Um, this is just a fun little mini series of just the the cast of the two series meeting up with each other, getting involved with a crazy birthday party, and I'm not gonna spoil the ending because this series is barely a year old. But if you're a fan of these two series, I highly recommend trying this out. This is actually really good. Excuse me. I'm going to give this a, uh, a 9 out of 10. This was actually pretty good. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode 367 and double shot number 293. Okay, until then, I will see you there. Bye.